Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Atrid Plus, where we did, I mean, great work with Isaac last time. We beat. What's that? What's that rock? That's Hush. Is it a rock? Or is it the sweat drops emoji from the telephone? And also, probably the emoji movie. Green mode with Azazel to unlock Lilith. We should probably do that sooner rather than later. Let's start with Apollyon. We got the least done as Apollyon. Hey, Ruka. Please get up here into the box. Thank you. SGM8. Super Games, mate. TLPA. Two losses. Please and thank you. It does not work at all. All right, Apollyon. Last run was uh, actually very, very good. We stomped all over the hush. Cat, why are you being such a big baby? You sleep so much, and then you come in here while I'm working. You want so much attention. You know what? You're a good boy. Get on my lap, okay? Don't take that sentence out of context. You can be on my lap while I play Isaac. People would pay good money for that on a Patreon account, I'm sure. Um, however, you cannot bite my hands when I touch the keyboard. This cat is so greedy for attention. If he's on your lap and you're uh, touching the keyboard or the mouse, he will bite you on the hand. It's like, that hand belongs to me. You wish, buddy, but sorry, evolution's a cruel mistress. She didn't give you opposable thumbs. Maybe you should have thought of that before you evolved, like, the ability to jump real high. Yeah, we'll take that. Now you want to leave? You're, you're becoming a recurring character here. Oh, you don't want to leave. You just want to poke your head out. Okay, you know what? Stare at the door. Apparently it's more entertaining than the video. He looked at me with the knowledge that I just told a joke. I might be projecting a little bit. Anyway, okay, 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 okay. We would like to be able to get a... Uh, blood bank on the next floor. The easiest way to do that is probably via a secret room. The secret room has given me enough money to get the blood bank on the next floor. That doesn't happen, like, according to plan that often. I'm extremely pleased with that. You know, usually you come up with a plan and then, you know, 30% of the time it fails so you get a contingency plan and you go through things that way. This time it just worked. We'll grab all of these. In fact, we're going to have so many uh, spirit hearts protecting us on the next floor that I'm a little scared, actually, of the power that we hold. You know that song? People want my power, and they want my station. I don't know. Can I... Maybe I can level with people? Can I uh, interface with you as if I were one of the kids? Um, people want my power, and they want my station. That's Santa Gold? They want more station. That's Santa Gold Go Live HD 2012 from the Coachella Music Festival. Festival? <laughs> That's not how you say that word. I've never been to the Coachella Music Festival. I have been to the, uh... I've been to the Hillside Music Festival in Guelph, Ontario. Many, many famous acts have played there. I saw Japan Droids play there. I did not see the Arcade Fire play there, but they did play there. I've also seen some wild stuff at Hillside. Drum circles. And now it's just become the monologue from the end of Blade Runner. Glittering drum circles off the island stage. There's nothing more to say about that, but I'd recommend it. Guelph's a cool town. Now. Are there many reasons to go to Guelph except for Hillside as a tourist? Probably not, but I think it's a good place to live. Very, you know, progressive thinking, environmentally friendly. Close to the former headquarters of Blackberry. Whatever happened to them? Jim Ball Silly was gonna buy the Nashville Predators, and now. All of a sudden, nobody's using a Blackberry Touch anymore. I don't know if... Or Blackberry Pearl. I, this is a, a bit of an aside, which is, I think, important in these videos at this point. But I took an introduction to um, business class in my second year of university. And it happened, like, right at... 
I'm trying to piece it together. It's now been long enough that I'm, like, questioning my own story and whether or not it makes sense, but, um... It was the second semester of my second year of university. So it started in, like, uh... You know, January... Of 2000 and 2008. And what you're supposed to do in the class. It's like a class that you'd see in a movie or a TV show depicting college life, right? We got 25,000 virtual dollars to invest. And then whoever, uh, or however you invested it in the performance of your portfolio determined part of your mark. Not all of your mark, because that would be a little ridiculous. But um, we'll take both here because we can, basically. Wow, that actually worked really well. Um, unfortunately, for those of you crunching the numbers in your head, you might be seeing where this is going. Um, that was also the dawn of the Great Recession, as it is called. Uh, you know, the effects still being felt to some extent to this day. Uh, basically, of the 25,000 virtual dollars, almost nobody made money. I believe that in a strange twist of fate, and even if this is my memory playing tricks on me, it makes for a better punchline to this story. If I remember correctly, the person who ended up being on top of the class leaderboard was a dude who, like, showed up for the first couple classes, got his login info, and then never actually showed up from the classroom that point onwards. So his money was just kept in cash. So he finished with 25000 Meanwhile, everybody else lost, like, 30% of their portfolios within six weeks. Anyway, the point is, back in the day, my, uh, my business professor, very smart lady, occupied uh, a prominent role in the local business world. She was like, there is no safer bet than Blackberry right now. <laughs> doesn't wonder how she's doing. She's probably fine. She had diversified income streams. She's a professor, businesswoman, owned a winery. I do sometimes wonder whatever happened to the, the Blackberry investment. Probably not a wise thing to joke about, you know. There's a lot of a lot riding on that. You know, a lot of people lost a ton of money when Nortel crashed as well. Okay, this is not what you tune into these videos for, but I thought the anecdote was at least interesting. It was a weird time to take a, an introduction to business class. I should have just sucked that one up. Not because Bob's brain's bad, but we've had it enough recently that we don't have to, you know, take Bob's brain on every single run, even though I do sort of like it. Most of the time. It's not like I like you or anything. And then they say Baka, is that correct? And then we all told ourselves, it's all right. Just spend a few more years in school, ride out the recession, and cruise to that high five figures job that everybody gets after college. And here we are. <laughs> Thank God for YouTube. Anyway, let's go to Bighorn here. I don't want to make it too real. These videos are an escape while also being tethered to the real world, of course. I'll just be straight up with you as well. It was one of the most useless courses I ever took in my entire, you know, university career. I don't, I didn't like taking electives. I understand it. I understand you, you want to produce well-rounded individuals. And uh, especially in today's day and age, a bachelor's degree in many subjects does not necessarily qualify you for work in that field to a huge and specialized degree. So producing a well-rounded individual is very important as a secondary function of a university. But also, I think I'm just going to suck this up. I want the stats. Um, it ended up working out for us, but it easily could have messed us up as well. It did give us damage in the tears, though, which is, like, the ideal combination. Um, at the same time, though... Eh. Took so many classes because I was borderline shoehorned into it that I have no interest in whatsoever. In hindsight. I did take one awesome class that was, like, the history... By the way, you're gonna... Oh, the Canadian University. Well, look, what are these Degrassi classes? No, like, I took some intense chemistry biology classes as well. But in between those, there was also, like, the history of popular music where, you know, our prof would come in and, you, you know, play some N.W.A. and be like, you know, here's the roots of early hip-hop culture, early gangster rap, at least. Because technically N.W.A. is not really early hip-hop when you consider Grandmaster Flash, etc. It's, hey, you get the idea. But I also took Econ 101. Eh, I didn't really resonate with that course. I took Geography, like, 101 something what like 101 x and the x is because i took it uh by correspondence wouldn't recommend it
Unless you're like really into geography, in which case go for it. But I don't know. I, I still don't understand the study of geography in the modern day. You know, I, I feel about geography the way that Twitch chat feels about biology. Where whenever I want to like think about what geography entails on a professional level, in my head I'm just like, what we've discovered the whole world. What more geography is there to is there to do? <laughs> we've done it. Ask me where any country is, I'll point it out on a map. I don't even have a degree. And I recognize that this is obviously not actually what the study of geography entails. At least I recognize that ignorance. Twitch chat's always like, how many bones does a, a pike fish have? I go, I don't know. I never learned it. Low bio major. We haven't seen it, I think, so I'll pick it up. I told you many times. What do you learn in biology? Show up. Do your work. Here's how you culture agar, and then get bacteria to grow on it. You don't culture agar, but here's how you place agar in a plate, and then culture bacteria to grow on it. Here's how you use the mass spectrometer. Here's how to tell the gender of a fruit fly. Proper uh, dissection etiquette. And then a lot of respect for the scientific journals in the university libraries. That's the... That's the crux of the of the matter right there. For those of you who might be starting college in the in the autumn. I don't need to do the after school special like go to school or stay go go to class if you're in school. Uh tangent that I do every time. It's gotten to the point where if it comes up in Twitch chat, or if it comes up during a stream, Twitch chat goes, we know, go to class. But seriously, like go to class. You'll thank yourself. You won't. You don't need to thank me. I'm giving you literal advice on the level of like, drink water. Consume oxygen to fuel your metabolic processes. Consume carbon for its energy, you know? But I'm reiterating advice that maybe you might have reprioritized at some point in your life. Rotten baby, this is a dream come true. And this run actually is good. It's not great. It's it's borderline great, though. I know this is a very confusing sentence for me to utter in, in this direction here, or in this setup here, but trust me when I say this. It's not quite great. I don't think it's too far away from greatness. What we need is, um... I mean, honestly, I wouldn't turn on my nose at, uh... Rate of Fire. Rate of Fire is 19 right now, which with Triple Shot is not that bad, but of course, you know... We're lucky if two shots land. One shot landing is the standard, but if two shots land, it's a dream come true. But it doesn't necessarily justify, you know, a tripling of our rate of fire. So, uh, it would be nice to amp that up a little bit. Triple rate of fire, one third of the damage. See? Even the song he's only heard the introduction of in, like, a movie trailer four years ago. Is that in a movie trailer? I don't, if it's not from a movie trailer, I don't know how I know this song. It wasn't a, a high incidence of me listening to the radio in 2012. I was mostly recording The Binding of Isaac on my laptop that I brought back from Korea. Dude ripped me off. That's a story for another day, though. Ooh, we can do that. Um, we could go to our boss trap room, but for a single regular chest, I think it's not really worth it. We got a nice little array of uh, demonic familiars, though. I like what we got going on here. I believe we'll have a 100% chance for a deal with the devil on our next floor. Basically, what I'm doing now is just going to the shop, or at least navigating towards the shop. Uh, the, the dream there... Wouldn't mind Mr. Boom, especially because we have... Okay, well... I wouldn't mind Mr. Boom, but we have a battery charge on the outside we could use to suck it up. But anyway, um, I want to donate some more money to the shop. If there's stuff worth buying, we might consider it because we do want to do boss rush on this run. But if there's no stuff worth buying, then uh, we we will not buy anything. But we will buy something because there's chaos. What a strange way to utter that sentence. Paralysis. Paralysis doesn't matter. We're still a minute and a half ahead of schedule, and we got a good uh, reroll. Or a stat roll, I should say, on our void play, so. Yeah. 
This floor has improved us. And again, I think we got that 100% deal with the devil on the next floor. Now, this is what you do. See, like, sometimes it's been a while since you've been in the thick of it when it comes to Isaac. Yeah, good damage. What you should do here is maximize your chance of greatness by holding on to the Hierophant card. You might be able to suck up blank card if it even exists in the shop at this point. Um, I don't think it does. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, get multiple uses out of it. Yeah, now that I think about it, I think Blank Card is a shop on lock. Well, it, I think it's fair to say there's a certain level of irony in getting Mr. Boom in the first chest that we've opened after asking for Mr. Boom. I wanted it from the boss, though. I didn't necessarily want it from that golden chest. They could have given us, you know, Fate or Steven or, you know, Infamy. But didn't cost us all that much in the little scheme of things. I think Blister is uh, straight up one of the worst trinkets in the game. It just amps up your knockback. I've heard, uh, not commonly, but I have heard anecdotal tales of people who think that knockback is like a top tier stat. Uh, I, I disagree with your assessment of knockback. I think knockback is relatively terrible. But if you know something I don't know, then, you know, more power to you in that department. So we're on... Dank Depths 1, uh, two bombs gives us three keys and a penny. And, uh, well, it's actually one bomb gives us three keys and a penny, which is a great trade. Previously, I was gonna say that we should, uh, wait until the next floor to use Temperance, but I, I no longer believe that. What I do believe in is Horror of Babylon working out well for us here and hopefully picking up some Blood Bag, IV Bag action. Don't really want IV Bag. I've made the mistake 40 times to suck up IV Bag with, uh, with Void. Admittedly, this is a ballsy play. For someone with only, like, 20 runs in this game, it's probably not the right move to do this. Ha ha ha. But on the other hand, I'm going to, regardless, because I want money for our donation machine, to take our shop to the next level a little faster. Uh, I'm gonna do it until that play, because I don't want to lose the, uh, the black card in the process, so... We can still use the IV bag to get double plays here, but obviously it's not going to be quite as uh, incentivized now that we've cost ourselves like five and a half spirit hearts in the process. And I stand by it. You know, we got progress to make, and this is one way that we can do it. And I don't think it slowed us down too much either. Bomb for three cents. I, I think we have to unlock lucky pennies. I don't think we've had them yet. Pretty sure the Lucky Penny was an unlock, but like, I'm having to dig deep in the memory banks here to remember um, if that is indeed the case. The faster we can get that, the better. Because that actually, I wouldn't say it's like an A tier crux of my strategy, but it is important. It's on the list of things that actually matter. Like, Monstro's Tooth, who cares, right? Somebody out there is like, I care. You know what? I'm glad you have an item that's your favorite that's bad, because that's funny, but come on. On an objective level. Monstro's Tooth, really? Lucky Pennies, though. They've probably accounted over their, you know, myriad runs they've been on for, like, 700 luck-ups. So, I want that aggregate effect. Sure, we got a range upgrade. Um, that's pretty terrible. I'm gonna gamble a little bit on a, something good showing up there. And it's HP. I'm gonna... Yeah, okay, we turn that into luck plus damage. I think it's positive. We've had really good stat rolls. But that time we did give up HP for it, and HP could be precious here. You know what? We do not have a guaranteed deal with the devil. I don't know what I was thinking there. The lovers. All right. Thank you. Book of Shadows is worth picking up, so we'll do it this way. So now we have invincibility. Oh no, no, no! Don't blow it up! I didn't. <laughs> I was doing the opposite thing that I wanted to do there. Don't blow it up. Don't blow it up. Uh oh. You know that song? I think it's Don't Turn Around. Not the one that goes, Don't Turn Around. I don't want to see your heart breaking. Dude, come on. Take me to. I'm not going to say take me to church and sing the song. Too many songs this episode. Just take me to 200 cents. That's all I ask. It, it held out. We're actually making really good progress on that donation machine, but we have slowed ourselves down to the point that Boss Rush is somewhat unlikely. Somewhat less likely, would be a better way to put it. We're crushing it in the damage department, though. 
Oh, that's what we need. Yeah, the cancer trinket. Rate of fire. It, I guess we're at the cap. And this, oh, this is the most annoying boss, dude. I don't want to use Book of Shadows, even though it's probably sensible. I don't want to use it just because we could use it to steal something good from the deal with the devil, if there is one, which there is. And um, we have Chaos, so the deals with the devil stink. Right, should have thought of that. Paralysis. Something's wrong. Uh, you can't void Mama Mega anymore. Uh, it, it doesn't give you multiple effects. Can you void the gift to get multiple things? Now, that's a question for another day. Because that deal sucked. <laughs> I got the freaking bean. It could have been anything, but they gave me an item that could have been anything, and it became an item that, when you press the space bar, can become anything. That's not really a great deal in hindsight. I messed that one up something fierce. And we are now on the low side when it comes to HP. With no respawns available. So we do want to basically relax. Remember, you know, we got Dark Bum backing us up here. If he can give us any extra HP, I'd be happy. So the gift does not work multiple times. I guess they've learned their lesson. It's unfortunate, but to be honest with you, I understand this one. Void doesn't necessarily need the the added benefit of being able to copy items that can copy items. Even if the fact that it's, you know, balancing the single player game and that strikes me as somewhat irrelevant. Oh, I understand where they're coming from. So all of a sudden, it's looking like a terrible decision. Yeah, <laughs> good one. Uh, all of a sudden, it's looking like a terrible decision to uh, give up like six spirit hearts to get IV bag on the last floor. They won't be able to take away the fact that we did donate a bunch. So at least there is some enduring progress. But now we need to we need to play well. And remember, the donation machine is very very nice. You pay into it, you know, when you're young and able. You draw out of it on your runs that are more enfeebled. And right now, um, it's probably a situation in which we'd rather be drawing out of it than putting into it. But if we're able to... Nope. If we're able to put into it and still be okay, we're going to get those dividends later anyway. So... Could make the, the sacrifice worth it here. That's a lot of uh, verbiage for just putting like 70 cents into a donation machine, but I gotta focus on the positive here because I'm finding myself in kind of a, a rough spot. This is what Dark Bum is here for as well. Uh, well, that's the wrong direction, unfortunately. We don't need to do Boss Rush. Boss Rush benefits us very little except for progress. And it, it may become literally impossible very shortly. But of course I want to give it a try if I can. I don't think we're going to make it. I don't think it's conceivable to make it. But I'm going to try. Let's go. We got nine seconds. It's a good step one. Yeah, we're not going to make it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. We can think our way out of this situation. It, we missed a chest. Oh, that was dumb. We might not be able to think our way out of this one. You unlocked something sticky in the depths. Oh, good. Super Gish, my favorite. Do we have to? Did you have to put it right there? A little rude, wouldn't you say? Made it nearly impossible to play. Okay, so we got the negative. Yeah, um, I've, I've completely done this to myself. That Blood Bank play has honestly never looked stupider. I need to break Bob's brain here. It's gone. I don't know how we didn't get hit at the start of this room, by the way. You might be asking yourself the same question. Wheel of fortune. I found pills. Rusted key. What a garbage payout. Devil. 
<sighs> like a single red heart. Hate this. Uh, don't make me go back, please. Single red heart. All I ask for, ever, single red heart. That's half a red heart. Gotta admit, that's a red start as far as I'm concerned, but it's not what we're looking for. Neither is umbilical cord. So I think the devil card might have saved us there. So I am patting myself on the back and saying that that was a 10 out of 10 play. Thank you for destroying the evil in the center of the room. Nothing, dude, really? Rock tinted. Double rock tinted. It's gotta be good. Okay, I mean, it was not, really. But, my lord. You gotta level with me there. Pretty smart plays to get ourselves out of the mouth of madness there. Even if, it's really not the mouth of madness, it's more like the mouth of badness. Because I, uh, was in that situation as a result of my own moronic decision on the blood bank earlier. What do we care about this? You know, we'll get a red heart maybe. I'd rather have the stats. Yeah, hook me up with that sweet shot speed stat. Daddy, I didn't feel good saying that. Okay. Well played. Good good dodging skills there. Um, got a double key room. One of the rare potential uh, productive rerolls if it happens, which it didn't. But. I still, I, I stand by that as being a, a pretty amazing couple of, well, not couple of floors, a pretty amazing floor in terms of performance. Didn't get hit, used our, uh, yeah, yeah, just hook me up, thank you. Um, used our uh, very, very meager resources properly, and it looks like we're going to be rewarded by leaving this run, uh, well, <laughs> leaving this floor intact. Hopefully not Syntact. Ooh. Yeah, okay, that was just an awful... I, I deserve to get hit about four times before I got hit there. Sometimes you just catch yourself in this, like, you know, destructive tailspin. And that's what we were in right there. We've got to pull out of it. We've got to get ourselves... I forgot we had Book of Shadows actually mapped to one of our items as well, so... Um, or, like, on Void, so... We uh, really should have been using that once every now and then. It is almost too good to use syndrome, but... Ooh, okay. Question mark card could have some value. Secret room. It fits the bill as well. Okay, we have one luck. I'm not expecting huge payouts here, but we can get the two luck while we play the uh, fortune teller. Okay, it's, so far it's done a lot of good work for us. It's given us a luck upgrade to make me even angrier as I squander our remaining money before going to possibly the hush fight. Uh, okay, uh, Vibrant Bulb has a certain je ne sais quoi associated with it. We're gonna, unfortunately, want to use Void almost all the time it's available. So I don't think that in particular this is a, a strong hold, but we'll see. Definitely we're gonna make boss rush. Or uh, we're gonna make the hush fight. Despite missing boss rush by a lot. We don't really want to go back there. Um, how'd you do for me? Could be worse. I don't know. I kind of think we're better off just... But it's such a meager tears upgrade. All three of these are like almost in the same camp right now. I think, I think we take this because at full charge, it's probably a pretty nice all stats up. So there's one of our like three spirit hearts squandered already. Um, you know what? 
Yeah, we'll get a charge for fighting Mazda. Let's do that. And then we'll just try not to use Void until it has to happen. I mean, this next room could be our last room, is the thing. Because of the way that the game is structured at this point. The thing is... It, oh, <laughs> uh, no. And none of these are worth it either, but... Um, the thing is, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, you should do it, it's new. That is a saving, that's something we're gonna save for when it becomes more uh, easily done. I mean, even this situation we put ourselves in here is kind of a nightmare. Like, we gotta beat Hush, or at least attempt to beat Hush, without a whole heck of a lot going for us. I don't think we're about to get spun. We only have one syringe. So we'll take science. Shouldn't have done that, because we want to be able to go into our shop. Now we can do it definitely, but for a second there's a bit... I didn't mean to pick up that half red heart. Oh, you burned me good. That hurts. So Guppy's Tail, irrelevant. Two of clubs, quite nice. I'm going to donate enough money to get you to 200, hopefully, so at least we make some progress there. Level 3 store upgrade. I'm happy to see that. Uh, I mean, this is the end. So I think we blow this up. See what we get. Locked down. Two of those. That's a good start. Alrighty. Um, we're probably not going to use bombs on Hush, so let's do the like next level strat. Of trying to find a, uh, a crawl space slash black market. Could find... Oh, we found it. Get out of here. It's a crawl space with three pennies inside of it. You've got to get yourself three pennies. Got yourself stuck in a moment. I guess we will use bombs because they're sad bombs, but anyway. What's the game plan? Uh, you should use the void against the hush when you know you're gonna win. You can use the question mark card at any moment to give yourself probably a pretty nice permanent Polaroid period of invincibility. Uh, except it won't be Polaroid, it'll be from Book of Shadows, but still. Same function, different name. The other thing is, we definitely should have taken Tarot Cloth. But this would be a big win, because it there's there's nothing saying that this had to be uh, a win. We did throw away more HP than we should have, uh, without a doubt. Go out on a limb and say that, you no, know, in the future, we might want to throw away zero HP instead of what we threw away, which was not zero HP. Not at all. However, a win here would be nice. A loss... I think I would just, I would shrug my shoulders. I'd be like, you know what, I did it to myself. We could have had max HP or close to max HP for this fight, but instead I, uh, I went for the, the ballsy decision and it was uh, actually very, very stupid. Lesson learned. And you know, a lesson learned is a lesson earned, man. I don't know what that means. I've done the crime and now I'll do the time. That's an expression that sort of makes sense. Eight of these bad boys left. Ooh, that one was a little scary. Yep, that pretty much directly contributed to me taking damage right there. Oh, it's gonna be close. We're about halfway through the fight. He's about halfway through his HP. A little bit more than halfway now. But, uh, you know, the sample size is small enough here that... Oh, dude, that was the clutchest pretty fly. I want you to know that I knew what I was doing there. I saw the pretty fly, uh, and I, I thought maybe there was a chance I could get back to where I needed to go. Wow, that's uh, basically just the epitome of a dick move. Oh! I really thought that wasn't going to catch me. Well, you know what? You got me. Fair play, Hush. Fair play. For now, we at least got something new done as a Polyon, maybe? 
Nope. <laughs> Thanks for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.